Hello, and welcome to this webinar, Maximize Your Test Operations with System Link. In the next 20 minutes or so, we're going to cover test operation challenges that we've heard from our conversations with you, give you an overview of the System Link software, get to the good stuff, and show you a demo, and give you a sneak peek of the investments we're making in this platform. Um, so in our conversations with you, uh, we've heard repeatedly that some of the areas that challenge you most are what's on this screen. And so uh, as far as asset management goes, it's really time consuming and difficult to track all of the resources that are used in your lab, as well as the location and having a maintenance schedule. Uh, on top of that, you add the systems management. What are the system settings? Does software need to be updated? Can you access the system securely, um, as well as get the data off of all of the, the, the systems that are in your fleet? Monitoring in terms of making sure that we can check out what's happening in real time as your tests are running and be proactive about corrective actions that need to be taken to prevent unplanned downtime. And the last thing we've heard is that it's really hard to set up a data collection and processing system. Your test engineers are subject matter experts in test, not necessarily in developing a data process that then connects to other enterprise data systems, especially as the need for sharing data is increasing. And so I want to walk you through a, a case study from General Motors where they came on our NI Connect keynote stage to talk about how they're addressing some of these challenges as they set up their Ultium project. And Ultium is their very ambitious project to have a modular battery and propulsion system that's customizable, scalable, and adaptable for all of their electric vehicle needs. They want to be able to take a battery cell and put it in different configurations depending on the power consumption need of the vehicle, whether it's a family sedan, a Hummer, or even a delivery vehicle. And by optimizing their test process, standardizing on how they are approaching this, they are recognizing huge benefits of scales, but also have a very high responsibility to make sure that every single component that goes through their testing process is as safe as it can be, as cost effective, and will perform the best that it can. Now, GM is partnering with NI to help make sure that their battery cell which is going into all of the configurations for their electric vehicle fleet, is going to be as safe, cost-effective, and uh, perform uh, as well as possible. And they decided to uh, standardize on our system link software. And as they were going through their evaluation process of standardization, they made sure that any component, any part of this platform that they were going to select had three requirements met. The first being that it had to be secure. It had to protect their IP, especially as the number of people who have access to their data is increasing over time. The second is that it needed to be scalable because what they're testing today is not what they're gonna be testing in two years and they need a system that is adaptable and can make sure that they're going to be able to meet any other testing requirements, say that the government um, starts to say must be completed before X can reach the market. But not only that, scalable in terms of the analysis and making sure that what, when the data comes in, they can update the analysis to make sure that they are optimizing the performance and safety and cost of those components going through this process. The last is that it needed to be open because it needed to integrate into existing IT infrastructure and the engineers wanted openness to be able to choose databases or analysis tools that will best serve them to make sure that they are meeting these high quality standards. And so at NI Connect, Steve Tarnowski said that NI is helping to reduce risk, perform their engineering work more efficiently, and give them faster time to insights and decisions thanks to their decision to work with our System Link software. So what is System Link? Um, System Link is NI's solution for test operations excellence. It is designed to break down silos from test engineering and make the connections through design validation, production manufacturing phases to the enterprise. It is meant to be easy to use and customizable so you can get to the insights you need and make decisive actions on your test operation process. So let's dive in to the architecture of how it works. 
It is server client based and SystemLink allows for the central coordination and management of systems, assets, software, and data. And so we can start with the requirements for an identity provider. We want to make sure that we authenticate all of the users logging in and we use the Open Connect ID protocol to uh, make this happen. We have our test systems, which are executing the test applications. And we need to make sure that we can configure, monitor, track asset utilization, install software at scale, and ingest any data coming off of these test systems. Um, I do want to note that these test systems rely on the role-based access control and are not backed by the um, by an identity provider. The web server um, authorizes the users logging in um, and redirects if necessary, uh, is responsible for inactivity timeouts as well as sessions management. The API load balancer enables high performance uh, network communications directly into the Kubernetes cluster that hosts SystemLink. And by using uh, Kubernetes, uh, we can uh, leverage the container orchestration, auto scaling, and the lifecycle management of various services, web applications, and infrastructure that SystemLink requires. So now that we know how all of the kind of like backend communication works, the capabilities that SystemLink is um, that are available are, are the following. We'll start with the role-based access control. So the role-based access control allows the right people to look at the right data based upon their level. Um, so we can isolate workspaces and we can give privileges to systems, data, and analysis routines. You can define these role and workspace access through either an open ID connect um, user claim or through direct assignment. Uh, the next capability is test plan management where we can maintain and schedule um, maintenance and calibration work orders, as well as monitor the test in real time and critical resources such as power consumption. Um, moving to systems and asset management, I've talked about this a little bit. Uh, this is where you can view all of your connected test systems, active and disconnected at the moment. You can click on each individual test system to see the assets that are installed, the software versions, look at a history of uh, files that have been generated by this test system. Uh, you can also um, calculate asset utilization to make sure that you are optimizing all of your test processes. And I want to talk to you about a case study from SubZero, uh, who was able to leverage the system and management asset to have some pretty great efficiency gains. Uh, so this team of test engineers, there was about 20 of them, they were feeling a lot of pressure due to the company's rapid growth and the number of new products that were being introduced into the market. This increased the number of new tests that they had to do, as well as iterations on their deployed system to make sure that all of the new testing requirements were met. And they decided that they needed to invest in a platform that could help them achieve some of these ambitious goals that the company had. And they opted to use system like software. And by standardizing on this and their processes, they were able to take an update that used to take 80 hours and multiple team members to a one person, 10 minute solution. And they were able to realize other benefits such as a more agile software development process to support the increased number of testing requirements, but without additional headcount. So they were happy with the results from SystemLink. Coming back to the architecture and other capabilities, there's file ingestion where the files can be saved either on-prem or in the cloud, and then they can be queried without having to use complex database syntax. Um, and you can also trigger custom analysis based off of new files as they are um, uploaded to your system uh, by using an API and integrating it with routines and notebooks. The data frame table allows for the normalization of disparate data um, as well as files into a columnar structure. These data frame tables are then associated with test results, which can then be used in visualizations and for searching the data. Um, going into test insights, 
This is where we can ingest test steps um, using either test stand or third-party sequencers, and we can view results by product and perform searches based off of all of the metadata that's collected during the testing process. We can also create high-level metrics and visualization dashboards by associating analysis and routines with the test results and the different steps throughout the process. Of course, we can uh, automate analysis and reporting. You can create interactive or automated report analysis using Jupyter, and you can have those results stored in a variety of reporting formats, including HTML and PDF. And so this entire end-to-end -end data ingestion process, aggregation of data, processing analytics, reporting, even the sign-off procedures, um, really added benefit um, to GM's Ultium project. Um, they were able to save thousands of man hours just at the start of this project by leveraging System Link, and there's more to come in terms of how they're using the system to continue to optimize um, everything about their test operation process for, for Ultium. So now, without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Josh who's going to get to the good stuff and show you uh, a demo of System Link. Thanks, Stephanie, for that wonderful overview. Now let's jump into the software. So the first thing I'm showing is one of the new dashboards that's in System Link. Uh, some of the changes that we've recently have made has made it e much easier to customize your dashboards. You can easily drag and drop and move things around to resize them. Uh, we have a whole bunch of new visualizations as well as new data sources to make it e easier than ever to populate these dashboards. So let's go ahead and drill in and show you some of the features inside of System Link. So one of the first applications is our systems application. From here, you can easily customize it, filter what systems you want to show, customize what columns you want to see, change how you group systems. It's very easy to customize to make it match uh, your business operations. We can also drill into a test system to see more information about this specific system. Now, one of the first tabs, uh, just to show you, is the ability to see what software is installed in System Link. This includes both the NI software as well as any third-party applications you may have deployed uh, using the NI Package Manager. Uh, in addition to the ability to view the installed software, we can also customize and deploy new software to the test systems with System Link, as well as upgrade uh, drivers and applications. If we switch over to the Asset tab, we can see all the equipment that's currently connected to the system. This includes both uh, NI equipment, like our PXI chassis and modules, as well as third-party equipment, like our Tektronic scope that's connected. In addition to being able to see what instruments uh, are connected to our system, we can also see the calibration information, as well as some of the sensor data, like the current temperature of each of the modules. One of the other benefits of System Link is it has built-in alarms and notifications included, so that uh, as our instruments are nearing their calibration, we'll automatically get email notifications indicating which instruments need to be calibrated so that we can take them down and ensure our measurements are accurate. If we click onto one of our PXI chassis, we can get some additional information. In this case, we can see the connection history as well as the utiliz utilization for this system uh, if it was currently in use. If we switch over to the tags tab, we can see some of the health information about this chassis, including things like the fan speeds, temperature, operational state, as well as the voltages for the power supply to make sure everything's operating uh, inside of its uh, specified parameters. If we go back to our dashboard, one of the other tiles that I've set up is showing the number of battery test results. So if I click on this tile, it'll take me to the System Link test results grid. This grid, very similar to our systems grid, you can easily customize to show uh, custom parameters, like in this case, the battery composition and capacity and we can click on the test results to get some additional information. As the test systems are running, they'll publish the test steps into System Link so we can see each step as it's being completed. Uh, and in the cases where there's pass or fails, we can see that information as well. If we click on one of the steps, we can see more information, including both the measurements that occurred when this step ran, as well as the inputs and outputs for that step. If we switch over to the files, we can see any files that were uh, published in addition to the measurement data to System Link. From inside of System Link, you can easily select more, one or more of these files and run some additional ad hoc analysis in addition to the built-in analysis routines that we have where you can customize it so that as data is flowing into System Link, we're automatically running those notebooks 
uh, if the file matches a specific set of parameters. Uh, one example of the kind of outputs those notebooks can create is our new data frame tables. tables. This allows you to uh, take your data from both CSV files and other for file formats and get it to a consistent file, uh, consistent data format so that you can both view, view it as well as uh, analyze the data. If we click on one of our data frame tables, we can open it up, we can choose which information uh, we're interested in viewing. In this case, I'm gonna select the sine wave and a square wave and we'll run the query uh, to uh, collect that data. And then we can zoom to the specific time frame that matches the data acquisition here. Uh, we can view both from a chart as well as it's shown in a tabular format by default. Now, if we wanted to uh, customize how we're viewing this, we could add this data to a, a dashboard, um, which I've already done. So if I go back to my test result, I pre-created a dashboard and linked it to the test result just to make it easier to view this data in an easy to digest way. One of the benefits of viewing the data in the dashboards is it provides more interactive user experience than viewing in a simple PDF. So in this case, I can zoom in on different time ranges. Uh, it'll basically decimate the data for both the voltage, current, and temperature to the exact same time ranges. Or I can zoom back out. I can also see some high-level metadata about uh, my test results, as well as I've decided to perform some calculations that I'm viewing down here at the bottom. And again, just like any of our other dashboards, you can easily customize it, resize it, add additional tiles, decide uh, and pick and choose what data you want to show. Finally, if we go back to our dashboards, just want to show off some of the new capabilities we have uh, as far as customizing it. So in this case, uh, we can pick a new pane to show. We have a bunch of different visualizations to choose from, everything from uh, time series data, bar charts, gauges, uh, pie charts, but one of the, my favorites I'm going to choose down here is our new uh, map tile. So we can easily move this around. Uh, in this case, I'm going to move it over here to the right of our bar chart. And then I'm going to, uh, down here at the bottom, move our grid over. And since this grid has some additional columns, we're going to go ahead and make it uh, full size. So now I can save this, and this is going to be my new dashboard. So anytime that I go into System Link, uh, this is pulling the most important information out of System Link and showing it so that I can view it in one single location. So with that, let's take a look at the roadmap to look at some of the new features that we're going to be working on in System Link. So in 2023, one of our main focuses is on our new hyperscalable architecture that's going to enable System Link to scale with your business operations, it allows it to run and to be deployed to a Kubernetes platform, uh, which can provide much better uptime, reliability, and robustness for your deployments. In addition, one of the other areas that we're going to continue to focus on is improving the data visualization as well as some of the dashboarding capabilities in System Link, like I just showed you, we're going to continue adding support for additional data sources and additional ways of representing, representing that data. Uh, one of the other areas that we're focused that's more specifically for the validation labs is around work order and test plan management. We're going to make it much easier inside of System Link for lab managers to track incoming test requests, as well as ability to assign those test requests and the test plans to specific systems, uh, as well as including the assets and the DUTs, and to be able to schedule when those tests need to be run. Last but not least, one of the areas that we're really excited about is our new System Link SaaS platform. Uh, this is going to make it easier for customers who don't have the in-house IT expertise to host their own System Link server, instead to use one that NI's provided. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Stephanie. So now I know you're excited to get in touch with us. And so a couple of things that you can do is to contact us. We are happy to answer any questions that you may have about what you're currently doing and how System Link might be able to help you. You can read more about System Link on our website. And if you're curious, you can even start taking our System Link training, which is available to anyone who is interested um, in learning more. And so with that, we are here ready to answer your questions. You can submit your question through the chat pod and Josh and I are going to be answering all of your questions as they, or as many questions as we can.